Howdy, Federico. Here's some answers to your questions. Uh, my guitar teachers. I took lessons in local music shops for many years, from when I was eight years old until I was 20. And when I was 20, I went to Musicians Institute, and at that time, studied with Joe DiOrio, Ron Eshte, and Don Mock. And every once in a while, Howard Roberts would come in. Um, as far as exercises and licks, um, the exercises definitely came from GIT more than anything. And also, Peter Sprague, who was a teacher that got me prepped for GIT for the six months before I went in. And as far as licks, it's mainly from transcribing tons and tons of solos from everybody from, gosh, Charlie Parker to Van Halen, Pat Metheny, George Lynch, um, Steve Morse, whoever floated my boat at the time. Musical influences, um, that would be some of the same guys, only uh, Jeff Beck was always at the top. Once I discovered him when I was about 14 or 15, He's been the cat, and um, I transcribed two of his records and learned to play all the solos on Blow by Blow and Wired. Who is your main influence? That would definitely be Jeff Beck. And I, I studied a lot of Joe DiOrio, too, when I was in my jazz bow days, and transcribed some of his solos and learned to do those. Um, I went through a lot of different phases. I learned a lot of Charlie Parker solos, probably 20 of them I could play through at one point and um learned some Jocko although that was kind of tough in the analog days with trying to slow his stuff down um so those are my <coughs> main folks uh the technique that's most difficult for me would be slide that is a pain in the ass so that's why I use the whammy pedal to be able to bend notes and chords Sweeping is also kind of difficult, so I, I never sweep across all six strings. I might do four strings at the most. And um, using open strings kicks my butt, too. I don't know why, but I generally don't do that. Okay, the question about um, modelers such as Fractal and Kemper versus real amplifiers. Um, I don't think, well, you know, I have not played through a Kemper, and I just now got a Fractal Audio um, AX8, and I got that for just effects, but um, it also has the amp in it, because I wanted it there for a backup in case my amp blows up on the road. Um... I've been using processors forever. I've been using modeling with Digitech. And now that I've switched to the Blue Guitar Amp 1, I don't think I'd go back because I have not heard that, uh, like modeling, that can really sound like a tube breaking up. So um, I haven't even plugged in my Fractal yet, so I can't say. But I did. I will tell you that I got the original Fractal, and... I played through all 100 presets and was not impressed at all and sent it back to eBay. <laughs> so now I'm using the four cable method and I'm going to check out the Fractal AX, AX8, which is essentially the FX8, only you got the amplifier models or impulses with it as well. Um, but I like the idea of going direct. And I'm looking forward to Blue Guitar has a, a a pedal coming out called the Blue Box that gives you choices of impulses of um, 10 or 12 different speaker models and then another knob where you get to do mic placement. So I love the idea of being able to get rid of the mic altogether um, because it leaves less variables for the sound man. If you give him exactly what you want, I, I, the hope is that he won't dick with it. <laughs> Working with Michael Jackson was like a paid vacation, period. It was awesome. Um, we got to see the world. We only played two or three days a week. And we really got to see, for instance, when we were in, in Italy, we could see the Forum and the Coliseum. And um, unlike most tours where you 
are just constantly on the move and have no idea where you are most of the time. It was fun. Plus, I was a a big fan of Michael's music before I even got the gig. And when I got the gig in 1987, he was at his peak, and it was his first solo tour without his brothers. So um, everybody was really charged. Everybody was really glad to be there, and we stayed friends to this day. And uh, it was awesome to be able to be part of a show that big and see the inner workings and how there was 100 people that went from city to city with us all, from carpenters to catering to hair, makeup, wardrobe, and the the techs for stage. Um, so I have nothing but positive comments about that. And he was always really cool and respectful with everyone. So it was a, a real joy, and I got to do it for 10 years. And part two of that same question, um, I would just say it was like a paid vacation. Next question. No, he was not uncomfortable with musicians at all. I think he was the most comfortable on stage performing, and rehearsals were no different. He had been doing it since he was five years old, so it was really second nature with him. And uh, unlike a lot of stars that would get famous later in their lives, um, because Michael was so comfortable with it, he never lost his temper. He, he was never nasty with anybody. He was always very even-tempered. As far as a guitar player only giving his or her best after 40, I think that really depends on the individual because there are some young players that are just phenomenal that you never know how they're going to end up. I mean, they might just be phenomenal and then stay at the same level for the rest of their lives. You never know. Uh, but somebody like Jeff Beck is a prime example of somebody that keeps growing and growing. I mean, he was a an innovator from the very beginning and created a lot of techniques that we use in rock and roll today that people have forgotten where it even came from. Um but he's he's my greatest inspiration in that regard because he's always looking for something new and always improving. I will add, though, for my own playing, I think I'm playing now better than I ever have because I've been doing it so long and being on stage is more comfortable than it ever has been, so it's easier for me to not be nervous and, and just try to dig in uh, to the best of my abilities. But having said that, it really depends on the environment. It depends on the situation I'm playing in, if I'm playing alone with my films or if I'm playing with a band. And it, if it's a good band, it's a hell of a lot easier to, to be relaxed and do my best. If it's a band that is playing for the very first time and there's a lot of nervous energy there, of course it's not going to be as good as something that's really well rehearsed. Which musician do I want to play with in the future? Well, I just got an offer to write with somebody that I really, really highly respect. And uh, his name is Bruce Caphan, K-A-P-H-A-N. And he's he's got one of my, my favorite all-time records, which is called Slider. He's a, a pedal steel player, and uh, his stuff is just absolutely phenomenal. So I would I would say that's the guy. And what did I learn from the great Jeff Beck? Um, gosh, I think the best takeaway is adventure, to always experiment and pull new things out of yourself, no matter what your age. I mean, he's almost 73 years old and still creating new things. So, um, And also the fact that he listens to everything, from the Spice Girls to Ornette Coleman, um, that was one of the most beautiful things about being around him so much for three years to, is to see where his brain is and what he listens to and to hear his comments about different kinds of music. And he's, he's turned me on to some music that is just the weirdest crap I would never have patience for, but he hears something in it that he can add to his own playing. So that was, that was a real eye-opener. Uh, I remember being in his flat 
and watching TV with some of the pop shows like American Idol or British Idol or stuff like that. And it just surprised me that he had the patience to listen to that kind of stuff. And he would get very involved like it was a football game and be yelling at the TV. <laughs> but um, just keeping a real, real open mind was something I got from him. And that is all. Adios, muchacho.